Hi everyone and welcome back. We are going to be talking about how to take focus notes in this video, specifically from our AP World History textbook. Now again, as we set up our Cornell page, remember that you're going to have your topic and objective at the top. For our textbook, this is usually where we put the chapter and section number along with the title, which is in red usually, and then the page numbers as well. Your teacher will usually give you your over arching question or the essential question. This is something that can be found online on Blackboard. Next, we're going to be focusing here on this notes portion. Again, your notes should be organized, neatly written so that you can refer back to them and actually see and know what you wrote about. Spaced out in case we need to add things in for clarification or when collaborating with our partners. In your own words and then short phrases are to the point. You do not want to have to copy down an entire paragraph just to put that into your notes. The next thing I have here is just a brain refresher. Again, we are going to make sure our notes are organized. What I always tell people is your blue headings, which I'll show you when we are actually looking at the textbook, should stand out so that you can refer back to those blue headings very easily. And again, when we are working with our actual notes, you're going to want to make sure you have some sort of bullet point method, which tells you the topic, the subtopic, and any details. Um, and this, again, is something that should tell you here's the main or the most important points and some things that happened underneath that. Online, you are going to find digital copies of the note pages. Feel free to print these off if you have the capability to print. If not, again, you can always set up your paper, oops, set up your paper to look like this. So the one that I'm going to be working on today is one from Chapter 3, which is really introducing one of our ancient societies and talking about the inequalities that these ancient societies are going to have. So that's what I copied down for my topic and objective, as well as my essential question. Here's what a textbook page looks like if you had the actual textbook as well as what is online. You'll notice the red heading here. This red heading is our topic, which went into the topic of an, an objective box. And then you'll notice this blue heading here. The blue headings, again, are going to be your titles that are within your notes page, and I'll show you what this looks like in a little bit. As I'm reading through my first paragraph, this is really your introduction. This is your preview of what the entire lesson or what that is entire reading is going to be about. My suggestion is find one or two important things from here saying this is what the entire lesson is about, summarizing it, and then again putting it into your own words. So because in this section we're talking about um, how did the formation of cities and states give rise to inequalities? This section here, as I'm reading through, it says among the most novel features of early urban life, at least to our imaginary village visitor, was the amazing specialization of work. In document 3.5, an Egyptian teacher tries to persuade a reluctant student preparing to be a scribe, a literate public official, to take his lesson seriously by pointing out the disadvantages of the many other occupations that await him. So as I'm reading through this, this is really talking about that idea of specialization or this idea that I don't have to do everything in my life. I can go to a grocery store now or in this case a market and buy food. I have um, somebody who is going to make tools for my farm and I don't have to do each of those things throughout my entire day. So this is specialization where I focus on that one task. And so that's really what I wrote here for my introduction and that's it. Short, sweet, to the point. Then what I'm going to do in my next section here is I have a blue heading and so I'm going to have that blue heading stand out. In my case, I underline them. Um, some people in the past have bolded them, um, put them in all caps, used different colors, highlighted, so on and so forth. So find something that makes that heading stand out. You'll also notice that I left a little bit of space here because again, I'm going to have to add some things when I collaborate with others on my notes in the next class. As I'm reading through this, that first sentence usually gives you a good idea, again, of what that paragraph's going to be about, much like when we write a CEA paragraph. And so this says, alongside the occupational specialization of the first civilizations lay their vast inequalities in wealth, status, and power. And so this is really like the, again, the big idea of this paragraph. And so I wrote in here, inequalities in wealth, status, and power. The next thing it says in here is here we confront a remarkable and persistent feature of the human journey. As ingenuity and technology created more productive economies, the greater wealth now available to societies was everywhere piled up rather than spread out. 
Early signs of this erosion of equality were evident in the more subtle and complex gathering and hunting societies, such as the Chumash, and in agricultural chiefdoms, such as the Cahokia. But the advent of urban-based civilizations multiplied and magnified these inequalities many times over, as the egalitarian values of earlier cultures were everywhere displaced. This transition represents one of the major turning points in the social history of humankind. Now you'll notice one of the things I did here was I read through the entire paragraph and then I'm going to go back and skim and say, okay, so this is about inequalities and what are some inequalities or characteristics or notes that I should have about how inequalities formed? Because again, that's our essential question and that's what this paragraph is about. So one of my first reading tips is read through an entire paragraph before you start writing down every little thing because you're going to realize that by reading through an entire paragraph, you're able to put this into your own words better as well as shorten it up versus having to write every single thing. So here I put urban societies, magnified inequalities. I found that here, urban-based civilizations. Remember, urban means city, urban city. And the second thing here is no longer egalitarian culture as with hunter-gatherer societies. And so here I'm thinking either I don't know the word egalitarian or it's something I remember Miss Hagen or Mrs. Zarnick talking about in class and so I know that's an important word to know so I circled it here. It could also be something that again later on you talk about with your group members when you collaborate. As I move on to the second paragraph here again I'm going to keep doing the same thing so I'm going to read through that first sentence and then see is there anything I need to take notes on or can I keep writing as I skim through this paragraph really quickly with you. I notice that they're going to be talking about this inequality and this hierarchy. One of my favorite representations of a hierarchy is to draw the social triangle. And so I saw here that they were going to talk about the upper class. They were also going to, as I flip to the next page, talk about what's called a free commoner and the slave. So these are my three groups. In history, we also want to be able to give examples. And so here I'm going to give examples of, well, what does it look like to be a part of the upper class? What does it look like to be a free commoner? And what does it look like to be a slave? And so then as I read through this, I realized, okay, upper class, you know, you have the wealth, you avoided physical labor, and you had occupied top positions. If I wanted to, I could go into more depth about what those top positions are. But for right now, that's all I really need to know. Again, as I'm talking with a classmate and collaborating later, maybe I want to add to or we're going to dive back into our textbook to then look at those top positions. One of the things I do want to mention that is not specifically in this video, or I should say in this reading, um, when you come across maps or pictures as you are going through this, please make sure you note those in your notes as well. There's a reason they are used, and again, we are a stimulus-based class, aka any pictures, maps, charts, graphs, those are things that are free game when it comes to any SAQ, DBQ, LEQ, any type of testing that we are going to do. So make sure you make note of those. How does it connect to that essential question or what we're talking about? As you can see here, I've added to my notes. I used a little bit different color because this is something that I felt was a detail to be added in, not a specific topic. Again, as I'm reading, I add these things in, and then I would move on to my next blue heading. You'll see that my next blue heading here is a standout blue heading, so I underline mine, and then I started writing my notes. Continued reading. I have my examples here. I indented my examples. And then last but not least, I have to go on to the back side of my page. And so I drew an arrow to remind myself, like, hey, I have a back side, so I need to make sure I collaborate and then use that for my summary as well. Again, starting out with a new heading, adding to my notes here. You'll notice that some of my notes are a little bit shorter. Some of them are a little bit longer, depending on how I wanted to put that into my own words. And then last but not least, I'm all done with that back page. It is perfectly fine to have space and room. Again, these are where you can add ideas from anyone when you collaborate with them. And then this is what my notes are going to look like at the end. So you can see here I have some standout headings. This stands out to me as I look at my notes. And last but not least, as I'm going through these notes, I want to make sure that I'm able to answer this essential question. So how do the formation of cities and states give rise to inequalities? And I really have three parts here. I have the inequality or hierarchy of class, hierarchy of gender, and then what it looked like for patriarchy and practice. So those three things should help me then answer that essential question. 
if you are all done reading and you took your notes and you can't answer that essential question, one, that's a really great point to then bring when you collaborate with other people in class, but it's also something to talk to your teacher about if you continually have problems with it because notes are very important. Again, there's something that we want to go back to constantly, not only for tests, but also for seeing comparisons or seeing um, different um, connections between groups as we go throughout all of the time that we're going to be studying. My last reminder for you, and I have it here, is your notes are going to be your own. They may look a little bit different than mine, but some of the things that we are going to emphasize is that they should be organized. You need to have standout headings, bullet points of some sort for detail, and then again you can see that I have lots of space here on the front as well as on the back to add new ideas when you collaborate later. If you have any other questions about how to take notes or what your notes should look like in terms of organization, feel free to reach out to one of your teachers. Bye.